now you can hear me. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I knew there was a tiny little button that I hadn't pressed, um, but hopefully you can hear me and see me now. So let's just have a look. Who is here? Hi, Jana. It doesn't matter that you're early. Great. Oh, <laughs> it's St. George's Day today. Um, and I will be totally honest with you that it was a complete coincidence um, that we're doing dragons today because it was scheduled for yesterday, as um, some of you will have um, found out because you've been waiting to um, watch it yesterday but I had to reschedule it because I've been working all weekend and I needed to finish off um, the phone for the makers box and I chose to do that from home because once we walk into um, our um, workspace here at the moment it's there, there are so many distractions because everything is just completely different from normal we have um, absent um, staff members um, we have um, a different routine every day and um, even though we are obviously not going to um, shows where we meet all you lovely people um, we have all kinds of other things that are being thrown at us um, and we have to respond to it notwithstanding so many inquiries because Royal Mail unfortunately is a little bit slow at the moment but we've had a local postman tell us that um, they basically have got 80% more work and 20% more staff than normal. So, and that of course varies from region to region as well because um, you just don't know who needs to take time out for self-isolation or whether they're ill or whatever is happening. Um, we've had two staff members who had a bereavement in the family um, linked to coronavirus. So there's nothing we can do about it. We just have to literally respond to anything that's happening in, in the moment. And so, um, if anybody's watching and you've been waiting for your order or it's been or something has been confused it's because we had to pull people in doing things that they normally don't do and then um, both Sophie and I have been stepping in as well you haven't seen much of Sophie she's been in the background slaving away looking at all kinds of things um, how we can make our life easier um, at this time um, at the moment so let's just see who's here hi Ross um, great uh, and everybody can hear me just as well because otherwise I would have just talked to myself which I do a lot apparently um, hi Chandra okay so now Chandra I have to ask you a question have you missed a single um, one of those episodes and please tell me I know you have a, um, um, a week off at the moment but please tell me how do you manage to watch them when you're um, on duty is it is, are you do, are you wheeling me into the operation theater I need to know so tell me um, Yes, dragons do not like St. George's Day, but our dragons, they're actually good friends with um, with everybody because they're, they're more like Puff the Magic Dragon, which um, is how I would like to think of them. Makes me always sad listening to that song, but, and I don't want to be sad, so. Hi Donna, nice to see you here. Um, who else have we got? Karen Wintel. Oh my goodness, Karen, I loved that doll that you made. I just, it's just unbelievable. If you want to see it, pop onto our Facebook page. I have actually shared it with uh, Karen's permission. Of, of course, I've given her credit for it as well. It's absolutely amazing. And then the little doll to go with the doll. Um, that That's just, yeah, just keep going, keep going. You definitely made my day when I saw that little, sweet little face with the big round eyes and uh, this beautiful knitted body, amazing. Um, hi, Janet. Um, I'm new to felting and have ordered the surprise box. I also have the pink cushion, which I've just started. Brilliant! I'm actually using um, a, a very simplified version of the pink cushion here um, for needles, all kinds of needles. So they're nice and handy, and they um, they they're in one place. And um, the surprise box is is fun because you just get an, a whole explosion of fiber. In fact, on the first of each month um, or thereabouts, unless it falls on a Sunday. I will, uh, from now on, always introducing the new maker's boxes by opening up what is in it and what you can make with it. That's the fairy box, the maker's box. And of course, I will be talking about the surprise box, but only in riddles, maybe. Can't see it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a surprise. Might let, might, I might let you have a look at some of the older surprise boxes. Um, oh, let's see. 
what else is going on hi sandra oh my goodness there's so many comments um and i have to try and um look from the top down um um okay so um jana tell me why did you get to wear scout uniform have i missed <laughs> have i missed anything here um no i didn't move um the dragon making on purpose today it was sophie who said oh a dragon on saint george's day and i said what today and she said yeah i thought that's why you moved it but obviously the dragons wanted to be moved to today so that's fine um anita hello um you are all doing brilliantly oh thank you the fact that orders are being processed and delivered is incredible well done to you guys thank you very much anita it um yeah we have got some amazing people working here and they're putting in whatever they've got in the tank and uh, so we're very very grateful and um it just seems that we just don't know who's here tomorrow or the day after or what might happen in people's lives and and so it's um we all we can do is just um soldier on one way or another and uh, we all know it's gonna it's gonna come to an end um thank you yana um you you must understand also um, what that's like um Oh, you, oh, I see. So you, you've been lucky to watch me, Chandra. That's nice to hear. Um, hi, Chris. I think your um, price is on its way together with uh, some other stuff. Um, hi, Alex. And, um, oh, okay. So you thought, um, Chandra, I, uh, you were going to miss a couple of these <laughs> episodes, but then I rescheduled. That was lucky. <laughs> Obviously, I must be sort of um, reading um, the universe out there. Um, oh hi Jane it's nice to see you sorry about yesterday I know you thought we were on yesterday it had even somebody ring um, the, the workshop yesterday and said oh when's the dragons and I'm like oh I'm sorry they will be moved so um, <laughs> so you do sometimes watch things at work do I I probably don't want to know what that might be um, St. George's Day that it is today um hi Cass it's really nice to see you I know you've um been taken over by the world of crochet but um I, I do remember you as a very very active needle filter so it's really nice to see you um been a long time just don't have enough time for all the hobbies yeah we're all in the same boat hi Jennifer um what on earth are you doing um so you're currently cutting out scrubs for Fritz I can't even say that. Is that is that a Scottish word? <laughs> I'm definitely stumped by that one. Um, through a local sewing group. Um, okay, you have to explain. Hi, Sonia. Um, first watch for me on the live, but your online videos are great. Oh, thank you. That's so nice to um, so nice to know. And and Anita has literally just a delivery. Um, has had just a delivery from the postman. Um, from the makers. Yoohoo! So that's great. Um, so Chris, you're looking forward to the new things and the change yesterday really confused me, but it doesn't take much. Sorry. And there I thought, Chris, you of all people would have um, been able to read my mind that um, the dragons were off for a day, but um, no such luck. Um, yeah, I, I tried to make it clear. I changed it on YouTube and I changed it on Facebook, but of course not everybody finds us um, through that route. So. Um, Oh, I see Frimley. It's not, not some word that you threw at me, um, Jennifer. It, it's meant to say Frimley. Okay, that's okay then. Um, so what color scruff, scrubs are you making is um, um, Chandra asking. Um, oh, have you actually got pink scrubs? Okay, I've got to stop chattering now because we're here to make dragons. And uh, normally Emma is um, watching. I haven't seen her pop up yet, but I know she's not very far um, usually from the whole... Um, from the whole event taking place and of course she very helpfully always posts links if you need to know any so making um, a dragon this was actually one of our makers boxes um maybe don't know last year april around about that and you could make dragons and dinosaurs and um these are the dragons there is actually a third dragon but um well she's the mama dragon and she's decided to go into self-isolation so um daddy dragon and um little dragon um, they're just on their own at the moment making the best of it and um, the truth is told I just can't find her she's hiding somewhere so um, that's that's it and um, we're starting out by using 
um, our extra strong pipe cleaners. Now, if you don't have extra strong pipe cleaners, it's not the end of the world. It might just be that they're a little bit more floppy, the dragons. Um, you could also double up non-extra strong pipe cleaners. Um, these pipe cleaners, they're probably um, the closest still that you could use to actually clean your pipe. They are very... Um, um, they are very strong in comparison to craft pipe cleaners, which sort of often just flop. They also have a cotton cover, so they're quite nice to work with. If you bend them lots of times, back and forth and back and forth, they will break. So that is not um, recommended to do that. We love them because you can um, wrap the wool around it and it has an instant grip because of the, um, the cotton cover on there. Um, and then, of course, we also have colored pipe cleaner. They're also strong and we use them for mice. So the technique I will be showing you to wrap wire will help you to make our um, world famous mice. And here you can see the pink pipe cleaner is actually exposed. So you can cheat a little bit and don't have to wrap everything with wool, but you can make use of the of the pipe cleaner um, to show as well. And we also have a lovely dormouse um, kit which I should have brought the dormouse down, but it's also done in a very similar way. So you can, once you get the hang of wrapping um, wire or pipe cleaner with wool, you can uh, make any of these. And there's a particular knack to it. And I'm just going to um, come down a little bit. Oh, there's Emma. Um, I was having a conference call with Sophie. Yes, I actually, <laughs> I walked out of that. Um, I heard you talking to her. So um, nice to, to call it a conference call. Um, Oh, I see. Okay. So Chris is just saying he, he actually sets his phone as a reminder um, for when um, the live streams are on. And I think that's lovely. So, um, yes, Mama Dragon is away having a, a new baby dragon. Oh, well, I suppose to go away these days. There have been lots of babies born. I don't, I'm not entirely sure how um, local hospitals manage it with um, dads being present or not, but I'm sure there have there have been some um, mamas who had to go away to have a baby dragon. Yes, and the baby dragon, I suppose, I'm making here now. Okay, so let's um, do a bit of a close up, so I can show you how to wrap the pipe cleaner. There you go. And if you're wondering what's happened to my eczema, well, it's still there, but I've actually put some um, what's it called foundation on it. I don't put it on my face. I don't know how to use it, but I thought I have got like a tiny little tube of like a sample and I thought, oh, let's put it on my hands. Otherwise I'd just look too horrid. So um, there it's healing, but it's still there. Anyway, there's the, um, the 15 centimeter pipe cleaner end that I'm going to start with by wrapping the ends with um, the darker wool. So if you're making um, a tiny dragon like this, you could just have um, the hands, um, in, in the dragon color. Um, there is a tiny little bit of brown underneath it, but certainly the larger one has got much more distinct hands there. And um, to, to wrap the wool, you have to sort of tease it out a little bit because you want to only wrap really thin um, layers onto it. And you, you sort of let the wool grip into the pipe cleaner. And I'm not um, pulling it too much, but I'm letting the wool grip into um, the pipe cleaner cover until I've got um, sort of a good fastening on there. And then I pull it a bit tighter because I just want to put this, the thinnest layer on there possible. There you go. And then when you get um, a nice um, layer there, like that, then I'm going to bend it in so that the bend is covered with wool. And that means that um, now I don't have a sharp pipe cleaner end sticking out. The sharp pipe cleaner end is there where I'm poking it with my thumb. And now I'm going to continue wrapping just the end of the pipe cleaner. Keep it nice and tight with um, the black wool. So that um, now I've got a nice little um, sort of fist or end of, a, end of the hand there. And then I'm getting, getting rid of the rest of the pipe cleaner, um, sorry, the wool, by just wrapping it around the pipe cleaner. Now, can you notice what I'm doing? I'm actually not wrapping the wool. I'm twisting the pipe cleaner around and therefore the wool is just sort of automatically fastening onto um, the pipe cleaner. That's a really good way to, um, to get a nice, neat um, wrap. And I'll, I'll use that technique again because that way you don't let go of the wool and the tension stays nice and um, um, strong. So I'm itching my nose because I've got fluff up my nose now. Okay, so here we go. 
um, that's a nice neat um, end there and I'm going to do the um, other side as well now so repeating that get the pipe cleaner um, the pipe cleaner cover to grip the wool and then once you've got a cover here then you bend it in so that the bend is actually covered with the black and then um, build up the layers a little bit more to make the hand a bit more fatter but also to cover the two parallel pipe cleaners up so that they all become one and then um, let the rest of the wool sort of just fizzle out onto the pipe cleaner. Now there are two different ways. Um, if you if you have um, our lovely um, dragon mix, which I'm just going to flood the screen with, look at this, we buy it um, mixed like this and we just never quite know what colours um, emerge. So when you buy it, you also don't know what colours emerge. You might be getting mainly sort of autumnal colours, maybe you are lucky and you get a bit of green or maybe you don't want that maybe sometimes you can find a bit of purple in there as well it's just it's full of surprises this um dragon wool and we absolutely love it look there's a bit of green and um blue going on there and there's um i've got more here let's just see ah, what other colors i can show you oh look at this oh this is definitely a flooding of screen look at that isn't that a lovely color so um, yeah, we just never quite know what's inside and what we uncover. So I will apologize in advance if you think, oh, I wanted only orange. You might not just get that, but it is really, all of the colors are absolutely amazing. And if you've got lots of it, then you can cover the whole of the pipe cleaners from the word go with this wool. But if you want to save some of it and use um, a more economical way of covering, then um, I suggest you use a core wool that you colour in later. Now this core wool here, you probably have me heard me talk about this, is our lanolin rich. I absolutely love it. What you can't feel is that it has, it actually feels ever so slightly sticky, but in a nice way. And it's got, um, um, a, it's been cold washed, so it's absolutely clean. It's not dirty. It does smell of sheep, but it's a nice smell. Oh, I love the smell. It's got a really lovely long um, fibre. So, and and it teases out really nice. And because it has got that lanolin in it, it it's it it's almost a bit like Velcro. It sticks to its, itself. So, if you are wrapping wool, it um, you can add quite thick layers without the wool um, sort of lo going loose. And that's the nice thing about this is that you can just do that. So. When I'm wrapping wool, what you will notice is that I'm keeping the um, the wool fibre really flat like a ribbon. Imagine it's a ribbon and you don't want it to get all messy and twisted. You're keeping it nice and flat and that's how you wrap the wool around the pipe cleaner. So um, the lanolin rich works really well because it's not bitty and you can tease it out and you can get nice long strands of the wool um, to work for you. And then you just keep going over that one again build a little bit of bulk up and and um, to go from here where you're wrapping the wool to um, twisting the pipe cleaner so it um, wraps itself around the wool you just turn it round so you're 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 still holding the wool in the same hand as I did before when I was wrapping it you just turn the whole thing round and then you still got the wool in the left and you've got the pipe cleaner in the right hand or the other way around whichever way you you do it um, and then you just twist the pipe cleaner and let the wool feed through my hand and I'm letting it sort of tweet, um, tease out as, as I'm going and just let it feed through the fingers, keep the tension nice and neat and that way you um, twist the pipe cleaner and you wrap the wool around it that way and that's just a really easy and fast way to do it especially if you want to build up bulk quickly and, um, and then you just let the dear to itself so this doesn't need needle felting this is the, the th one thing about when you use wire armature and you start by wrapping wool you don't need to do an awful lot of um, needle felting um, so there's a set of arms here I'm gonna leave it as that for the for the moment and now I'm going to um, make the set of legs and for that because I'm making the large dragon and he's got big strong legs I'm using the whole length of the pipe cleaner the 30 centimeters this is the length that the pipe cleaners come in we now do 100 um, 
pipe cleaners in a pack. And so if you use lots of these, that's a really good way of, um, a really cheap way of buying them. I think they, um, I can't remember now, but um, are, what are they? Are they something like, I can't remember how much they are, but they're, they're um, definitely under 20 pounds for 100. So it works out um, really well um, to use um, if you're using lots of these pipe cleaners and we also do the pink ones and I'm just having a sip of my peppermint tea but remember we have got a Facebook group called Everyone a Maker um, on, and there you can share what you've been making share with, share with us the products that you've used and tell us what you think of them or how what a way you might have uh, found to use them we're always really keen to um, see what you're doing and, um, and how you interpret some of our um, ideas and uh, products so please do come and share. I'm just going to have a little read also what's going on here. Emma is very busy sharing things. Right, there we go. So I'm going to do um, the, the feet now. And um, because the feet are going to be covered later on with um, a different color wool here, that, that sort of brown gray, is um is the um south german merino and i'm going to give it much bigger feet later on um i'm just going to use the lanolin rich core wool and make a set of legs quite quickly but it's the same principle as what we've just done with um wrapping the pipe cleaner end then bending it over then wrapping it with wool going all the way across just so that you've got a, a base layer on there and um Go and work your way across. That's it. So the legs will um, look a lot um, shorter later on, but for now they look ginormous um, because they are um, they need to be bent and 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 the feet are going to be in. So if you imagine this is your dragon there. You can see why you need that length of um, of legs. Okay. Um, I've also got the instructions here that I'm trying to read at the same time, which um, uh, yes, okay. Because it's quite a while ago since I've made these. Um, I tried to remind myself earlier, and I'm I'm hoping I'm doing um, the right thing, but we'll find out. Right. I'm just going to wrap this. Um, if you need a felting, you'll also find there's always lots of way, ways of um, of getting to the same result. So even though sometimes um, the instructions say one thing, you might think, oh, actually, there's a better way of doing it. And I even do that. Um, it's just that I've learned something new or I've got different materials to hand. It's not written in stone, um, whatever, um, however we might get there. So just finishing the other end. We go bend that in um people like using wire armature because you get a, a sense of scale and proportion from the word go even though most of these animals look a bit skinny um you can sort of add bulk to it and just fatten them up but at least you have um, an idea how tall they will be and um and um where the the arms and the legs will be and so on so that's one of the reasons why people do like um using the um the wire armature so now i've got um set of legs here there all nice and covered and then i've got my third pipe cleaner and that one i'm going to bend now so that i can attach the um, arms and legs um to it and um for that i um I'm just looking at the instructions. So basically it says then bend the 30 centimeter pipe cleaner into a Z. And um, a Z is like that. There, that's the Z shape, right? There. So um, so that for the large dragon, the top is so that the instruction tell, and I'm referring to instructions that you have not got um, access to, but I might have to talk to Emma to see whether we can make them available as a PDF that people can actually buy. Um, so the, um, but in, in any case, um, for the large dragon, the top is eight centimeter. The other two parts are 11 centimeter each. So, we, um, I've got probably changed the, the dimension slightly, but I'm going to just stick with it for now. Just giving it, oh, that's lucky. That's exactly eight centimeters. And yeah, so I've done it exactly right. So there's that, that, that one is slightly shorter. 
and um, and then I'm going to start um, wrapping this part of the pipe cleaner the same way as I did with the legs and the arms but I'm starting with the white again because this is just all going to be visible inside so I'm making sure I'll give that a full quick whiz around there There we go. Okay, sorry, that's going to be a bit boring watching. Is there anything, anybody saying anything? Um, hi, Denise. F first time watching and just joined the Facebook group. Didn't know about it till now. Oh, well, we're still, we're still trying to um, let everybody know about us. But of course, um, yeah, not everybody does. Anyway, I'm just not I'm not going to go any further with this now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to trap now the top set of arms in there. And to do this, um I I'm just literally going to wind them round once around the pipe cleaner just like that. There. So I've got my first set of arms there. I've started with the um the top half and then I'm going to go down by about 5 cm. So I'm measuring that up to about here. And that's where I'm going to add my legs in the same way. So I'm just adding them and twisting them round. So what in effect what I've got now is I have got my dragon. If you bend it in, um, I always find that if you bend these um, shapes into, into the shape it's going to be, it's becoming a lot more clear so I'm, I have to lay this um, on the side because you won't be able to see it otherwise so I've got a, I've got my my legs here two legs that's the body the arms on either side and then this is going to neck and the head and then um, most importantly I've got this really long tail because what I want eventually is the dragon to um, to stand on um, and if I do this you can see where I, what I'm doing um, you want the dragon to stand on its own with the tail being almost like the third leg. So you can see where I'm going with this. And then the, he's got sort of slightly bent knees there as well. And um, look, he's standing. Yay, we've got a very skinny dragon. So, um, so now we're just going to add um, bulk to him. And to do this, I am using the lanolin rich wool um, because it um, adds bulk really quickly. I'm going to start here at the end of the tail now, doing it exactly the same way. And I'm bending the end in as well because I don't want any um, sharp wire sticking out. Whilst you're adding bulk to your dragon, don't worry about bending him back into the shape that it suits you to work. So don't um, don't think that you ha he has to be in the, in the final position. You can always bend him back um, as long as you don't go... Um, too much back and forth back and forth with the wire you should be fine to um, manipulate the wire while you need it in a certain position to just continue working on him and um, and also the um, the pipe cleaners that are currently just sort of bend around the main pipe cleaner at the moment these will be uh, secured by wrapping um, wool around the main um, frame so that um, they can't jiggle about and they're just now so go, go around the joint a few times. And you notice that I'm not being so delicate anymore now with um, how I wrap the wool because I just need to put a good layer on there. And when it gets too much so that the wool doesn't actually stick anymore, then you start um, um, using your needle and felting it down. If any of you have ever used our beeswax balm, love this stuff. You wouldn't need that if you're using the, um, the cotton covered pipe cleaner or the lanolin rich um, wool um, but if you are using just wire or you're using a slippery wool then this stuff is brilliant and the way to, do, to use it is by just scraping a little bit off with your fingernail and then sort of um, distributing it between your fingers either you apply it onto the wire before you wrap it or you just make the wool a little bit sticky just wipe wipe it off it's a really lovely, um, it, it smells really nice. It's got lavender in it. It's got beeswax in it and lots of other um, really um, natural oils. So um, that way you're almost creating your own um, 
greasy wool if you if you want to call that um, and it's it works really well if you need to add a little bit of grip to your um, to your wool and that that works really well um, if anybody's got any um, questions uh, Denise is saying thanks so much for giving the weight so many people don't do it and it really helps beginners like me oh the weight of the wool okay well th th this is actually an interesting one because what we're trying to do in our um, in instructions is we try and give the weights but we're also trying to give um, we just say split the wool in half or then in a quarter or take a handful whatever because not everybody has got kitchen scales that weigh um, like a gram so um, we're trying to to give uh, both, so to, to help people who can actually weigh the wool and people who um, can't. Um, but if you've got kitchen scales, that is definitely a good solution um, to getting your um, weights right. Um, so just going around here. Um, my screen has just gone white here on on um, on you guys. Um, so I can see the comments, but for some reason um, I've dipped out. I don't know if, if that's happened at your end as well, but I'm still here and I'm still adding meat to the bones of my dragon here. There we are. And when you get to a point where it becomes sort of like a little bit uh, scruffy and fluffy, that is when you use your needle and you stab very gently into the wool, you can sort of avoid the, the wire by going past it. I'm using my, um, on here, our um, earth friendly um, felting mat. I've actually cleaned it today with a squeegee. We have got some brush brushes that you um, were able to buy, but you've bought them all. So we had to buy um, new and um, they're currently out of stock. But if you have a squeegee at home, you can use that too. So I'm adding bulk still to my dragon, still using the core wool. If you um, want to use um, the dragon wool from the outset, then you can do that too. There is no right or wrong, um, but it saves a little bit of the nice colorful wool if you want to um, use some core wool first. There's lots of different types of core wool, whatever you like. I'm using my favorite, which is the lanolin ridge. But if you have got one that um, you like using, then, um, yeah, you just do whatever you need to do. Um, so at some point, um, you will have to start using, and I've just run out of core wool, so I need to um, have a little dig around here. There's a bit more, because I, I really need to t uh, build up these legs, and I need to build up that tail a little bit more as well. There we go. Give him some big, strong thighs. And... Do that on the other side as well and then start building up bulk around that tail as well there we go it's actually quite surprising how much wool you do um, need when you um, make wire armature creatures because you're trying to build it up really tight and i'm just reading on the instructions what um how much what we actually say um, that you need um, so you need for the larger dragon 20 grams of the lanolin rich core wool you need 8 grams of South American merino brown grey which is the one that is around the feet and 4 grams of top covering wool bats which is the um, the dragon um, colour in our case but if you want to make a red dragon or a green dragon or whatever colour then you just use what um, what um, whatever color you prefer but that just shows if you were to use the um, dragon uh, mix from the beginning you would use 24 grams instead of four and that makes quite a lot of difference in terms of finances so um, definitely a good idea to um, use a core wool if you um, if you can there's actually a bit of red in there but I'm not too worried about that so I'm winding it round the tail now the tail will obviously be tapered, so I want the um, end of the tail to stay quite uh, spiky and pointy and then just add the bulk to the rest of it. So how are we doing for... There we go. He's um, definitely filling up nicely. How is everybody doing? Is anybody... Oh, you can still see, see us. Yes, still on here. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for reassuring me. Um, yes, 
So Emma, Emma's just saying we will have um, a version of the um, dragon coming soon. I'm just looking for more core wool here. Um, obviously didn't grab enough. Just, ah, there's a bit more. Here we go. The dragon is saved. You don't have to worry now. There. And um, I'm just adding more bulk. It's entirely up to you how you want to shape your dragon, whether you give him ginormous big legs or whether he's um, a rather of a stately figure and he's got a, um, a big tummy. You, you can um, dress your own dragon however you like them. Just build the base layer up so that um, you get an idea of where you need to add bulk. And um, I'm doing that around the other leg as well now. Um, if anybody is um, tuning in tomorrow, then I think, is that right, Emma? Are we doing roses tomorrow? Because I couldn't quite um, remember what the schedule is. There's so many we've um, decided on and planned ahead and um, it's so exciting. It's, it's it's almost like I've opened a tap and I can't stop thinking of ideas now. There's um, There will be so many exciting things coming. One of them is um, making um, a rainbow. Um, so this is this is the little brooch that I sort of made quickly. But on our um, newsletter and our free tutorial for May, um, we show you, we we teach you how to make a rainbow picture, and we have a really exciting new um, um, gift kit coming up where you can treat your um, loved ones or maybe somebody who needs a little bit of um, attention and care to a very, very basic needle felting kit, either introducing them to a new craft or maybe they just need a rainbow in their life, a rainbow of hope um, because they've had a bleak time, then um, that care kit will be amazing because um, you not only get wool and the tools and the instructions, you also get extra treats such as chocolate. We all need chocolate at times like this, um, a nice, a nice tea bag that um, will help you with um, with stress and anxiety and um, a lovely um, bag full of lavender which um, everybody knows is great um, as a great soothing um, um, aid um, but it also if you if you just want to keep your, the moths away from your wall then you can use it for that too and so while I'm chatting, I'm building more bulk on my dragon. And now it's time to needle felt some of this down. It just needs to lie down. And um, I'm stabbing him in into um, bits that um, stick out so that I can felt the wool down. You can shape the face of the dragon however you like as well. I chose that with my dragons, I've made them sort of cute little faces by keeping them quite round. But you can make them look more fearsome if you want to. Um, I quite like that shape. So again, there is no right or wrong. You can personalize your own dragon however you want him to be. And I, um, I think I'm going to start in a minute by showing you how to make his feet. That's sort of the next logical step. I'm just going to make his, his face a little bit less mouse-like. There. Add some bulk over the top. Um, the good thing also is that when you um, have a pipe cleaner in there and you need to extend the length if you want to make a longer um, head or something like that, you can actually go beyond the pipe cleaner by just building bulk up. That works, especially if you have a tail that needs to be longer. You can um, build up bulk beyond it. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually going sideways into the wool. That way I'm avoiding hitting the wire because you don't want to hit the wire um, too hard, you're going to break your needle or maybe you just bend it, but then it will break eventually. So I'm just um, going sideways. I still felt the fiber down. It still shrinks in size. It still flattens it, but I'm, um, I'm actually only um, hitting um, the wool with it rather than the wire. There. So there's the dragon now. And now I will show you how to make, and you can position them obviously, um, into um, the shape that you want them to to be in um, but I'm going to now show you how to do the feet and for that I do need that brown wool that's disappeared now oh my goodness one day I have it all in one place I have actually got it here it's just um, behind me there you go so this wool now we're, we're making him big feet so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the feet um, 
sort of flatter and broader than the actual wire. So I'm giving him some big shoes here. But what I'm doing is I'm felting it down um, around the foot as well, because I want him to have quite big flat feet there. There you go. Almost like, like he's wearing um, big um, slippers. And that way, me felting around the sides means that I also have to lift it off in a minute, but I'm giving him flat feet rather than little dainty round ones because I always imagine dragons have got ginormous big feet with big claws on it, even though I'm not doing the claws. So you can see you felt it flat, you felt it on the mat, but it comes off quite easily. And then you can go um, into it from the other side as well. So you're not only are you felting wool onto the foot, you're actually making um, a different shape of foot here by just felting a great big sort of flat featured foot there. And here at the front, that's actually all wool. The, the wire is here where I can't get in. And this is all wool where I can um, felt in comfortably. There we go. So Emma, if you, um, not Emma, uh, Chandra, if you're still watching, tell us a little bit what, um, what life is like um, out there. I know you are one of the key workers and much needed. And I know you've, you've um, got some time off, but I think you're on standby just in case you need to be come in. Um, I don't know if anybody else is um, sort of working for the NHS and um, can see what's happening right out there. Um, yeah, t tell us, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you coping? Um, how is everybody else coping? And um, best of all, have you had your test yet? Because that's one of the things that seems to be on the news all the time. Not enough testing, not enough testing. And um, yeah, just hoping that all of that will catch up eventually. But I did hear today on the news that they say don't um, use um, any um, like proper face masks. Because um, they're not that effective. But also I think they're trying to um, stop them being taken from um the medical professionals so that they don't have to go without when they desperately need them there we go it's quite strange actually sort of um being german and but obviously i've lived in this country for so many years now it's nearly i think it's where are we this is oh yeah it's um it's actually 27 27 years i've lived in the uk and um of course i watch or i i hear with interest what's going on in germany and i must I must admit I'm not actually that worried about my family in Germany because I just always sort of get the impression that the Germans are pretty much I don't know on top of things I don't know if you um, and I say this without any prejudice um, but I'm only saying it because I, I it reassures me because all my family lives in Germany it's just um, my husband and my children who are here um, or my my siblings and my dad and um, my grandmother who was 94 in um in february she's in germany and and again i just don't feel i don't feel half as worried as i think i would feel if um i was hearing it the other way around or maybe maybe it's just um the things that we get to, told in the news right so he's wearing great big slippers at the moment and that's um it's nice there so i'm now going to start using the dragon mix to uh, dress the dragon and um again it's the same old same old what we've been doing all the while um, basically I'm starting to colour him in and um, for this here I've got a lovely sort of um, yellow orange patch and um, and then you just felt it down as you're going along and um, if there's a particular colour you love in your dragon mix then keep it until um, the very last bit um, or if you want to make him a multicoloured dragon then um, make sure that you put the bits that you want in say Say, for example, you've got some nice red and you want him to have a nice red face, then leave that bit for the face and use the other um, colorway. So you can sort of almost make a, a multicolored dragon, but with um, a strategically planning where you're going to put the wool. Um, and I'm just loving this already. Oh, he's going to be amazing. I don't think he's going to be a baby. I think he's going to be a giant. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely nice and big. 
so it's 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 just a question of um, adding the wool and then um, stabbing it down. You will come to a point where you're not wrapping it around him anymore, but where you're laying it on um, in patches because other, if you're adding it um, around it, you're always um, um, making it um, bulky all around. But you might come to a point where you don't want to do that. But I'm not quite there yet, so I'm just giving him a nice um, upper body there. Adding the wool around him and then stabbing it into place. Covering the arms in a minute as well. You have to be a bit patient to obviously just cover all the areas and building the bulk, but um, he's, he's not as um, sturdy as the other dragon. I think that's okay. They all can all be different. He's a bit more sly, sly, slice. What's the word? More delicate anyway. He's also got quite short arms, but that's okay. They, they don't need long arms. So getting to the arm bit here. Stabbing that down as well as I'm going along. And um, right, Chandra has come back. Um, the physical um, work is pretty much what I'm trained for, but emotionally it can be quite exhausting. Yeah, I can imagine. And and you, I, I know that you work in quite a full on um, capacity already. So um, this is even more full up, full on, I guess. Um, and um, no testing for staff who are actually working. They only offer it if you go off sick. So as if to see if you can come back to work. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh dear. Um, and um, um, gosh, yeah. There's just so much. Of, who knows what on earth, you know, what we all make of this in time to come. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I still wake up in the morning with that sort of, I don't know, that weird feeling thinking, you know, when you wake up and you think, oh, the world is all right. And then you suddenly think, no, something's not right. And then as you as your brain kicks into place you think oh crap it's still coronavirus we're still in that whole thing and all the uncertainty and what's going to happen next and um how frightened or worried um should i be and um yes and all of that and and then you can also i can also imagine lots of people are getting fed up with it and and then you think well what's the point of all this lockdown when god knows what we're coming back to at the end of it and um and 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 a lot of our uh, li uh, liberties are so restricted at the moment people haven't seen their family forever and ever um i'm i'm sort of guessing karen that's um if you're still watching that's why you made that beautiful little doll um you said you haven't seen your grandchild for for weeks and it it must be really really hard I, I think I consider myself quite lucky in that I'm used to not seeing my family in Germany um, and um, I see my family that um, my my children and my husband every day so I, I do feel um, quite lucky in that respect and we've been we've been well we've all been really ill in January and um, I have no idea what that might have been or not but I've not been so ill in a long time and um, so sometimes I, I don't know if, if any of you feel that way that you think actually I wasn't very well then I wonder if that was already it um, but who knows we'll probably not find out for a long time if ever um, until they offer tests for antibodies and until they're reliable so all of that who knows um, but yeah I'm always interested in anybody's stories and I think it's really important that we keep talking to each other and um, I just I just keep um, fantasizing about a real big um, makers meet when all this is over. Somehow we've got to find a way of meeting up and and then we'll just hug all the time. Um, or or just just can you imagine just sitting sitting together with a nice glass of wine and just all the things that you sort of take for granted. Um, you just really really want to do it and um yeah there's so many people i can't wait to see and i can't wait to catch up and just um 
to say hello and 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 to say oh, I'm glad you're in my life so yeah lots of um doesn't always have to be family it can also be just friends and people who you know you um have things in common with and yeah oh there we go look how is he doing he's quite i think he's he's a giant actually i probably didn't read the instructions very well and uh, maybe i've i've been a bit too generous with the length of the but if you if you compare him to him he's definitely a, a head taller so that's great love him he's great um so now i'm i don't want to give him a yellow leg and an orange leg so i'm i think i'm going to try and grab a bit of orange out of that that really fiery um orange color that's in that to give him the other side i might give him a, a, a different colored tail so if you're using the dragon mix which is amazing just pick your color carefully um otherwise you end up with a very colorful creature i'm still stabbing it into place as i'm going along Oh, I know, Chandra. So I'm just reading that. Chandra was actually, um, is that the week you're having off? We were going to be, I've, I could keep losing um, track of time. We were going to be at the Country Living Fair. I was meant to be running workshop after workshop after workshop. And Chandra was going to be um, there helping me man the stand while, um, well, just being there. And it would have been such a nice, yeah, we would have definitely been able to have a glass of wine together then. But um, it's all gone to pots, basically. I'll do the tail in that colour. So you see that um, the colour can be quite different in, in that uh, little bit of... By the way, this is way more than four grams of dragon I'm using here because I'm, I'm, I haven't built his bulk up that well. So I'm now um, using more um, dragon. So if you're doing this at home and you're using core wool, then just keep using core wool until he's already the right size. Don't use your dragon mix to build up bulk, which is what I'm doing here currently. Use your um, dragon mix to uh, just cover the outside and save um, save that nice wool. Or if you've got any coloured um, bats, and I do love um, using bats for this as well because the bulk gets built up so much quicker. So I'm almost, I've almost coloured him in. He's almost um, um, there. And um, the positioning of the legs needs to uh, change a little bit so that we have more definition here. So I think um, the legs are more bent like that when they're actually standing. And he needs a bit more tummy cover. But um, all of that positioning I'm going to do in a minute. And then he also needs a much fatter tail, like a really strong tail. Um, Oh, the mice have just moved. They're watching too. Uh -huh. You can just, just about sort of maybe here when I hit the wire, I'm trying to be really um, um, gentle with this. So I don't, not stab too deep. So if I hit the wire, it's not, um, with such a force there. so bending the legs in will me mean that you can position him um, a bit lower you can have his head further down you can make his head longer if you want to and that will shorten him a little bit um, but he's um, definitely standing up quite quite nicely there um, he, so what happens, um, as I said earlier, when you just wrap the wool around it, it, um, it, it will look stripy. Um, so to avoid this, instead of wrapping the wool, you're going to have to start um, layering on patches of wool onto him. So if you don't want that stripy effect, then instead of uh, wrapping wool, which is what I've done to build bulk, but when you um, make your dragon, you're just going to use only um, the core wool and then you use the lovely dragon mix. Um, to layer over the top and then you don't get a stripy dra dragon unless you like the look of um, a stripy dragon like that but if you um, want it to be less stripy it will still be colorful but not striped so it doesn't look like you've wrapped him then just lay it over the top and felt it on 
that way. And um, I'm not going to make um, the, uh, the legs too bulky on this one. I do still have to color in a bit more on that um, right leg here. That's it. And all I'm doing is I'm just using a single needle here to um, felt it down. Um, with a lanolin rich, you best off using um, a medium needle. And then when you cover the top, you might be able to um, go onto a course. Um, it's a little bit difficult for me to say because I I've, have got so much in the um, habit of using um, twisted needles and the cross star needles. And I absolutely love them. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's also really hard to explain it. But once you get to um, to uh, use twisted needles, it's really hard to go back to anything else because they're just so nice to use. And um, even a, a coarse needle will fit into wool much longer than a normal coarse needle, which is often like the triangular needles, um, just because of the, the shape of the actual tip of the needle that will just... Um, um, if you imagine it's a spiral shape, it it's automatically seems thinner. So um, it just fits into um, wool, but it has the same grip and the same sort of bite as a coarse needle. It just fits into um, the wool longer than you imagine. Um, there. Right, so we've got a dragon here with a very wide nose yet and um, he probably needs bulking up a little bit. Um, I could use a bit more around his tail and I might want to get rid of his um, stripey um, appearance here on the head and I'll color in the nose. So to not have the stripes anymore because you've got a wool that's multicolored. So if you wrap it around, it um, will be stripey. Just lay on patches of the wool and felt them down instead of wrapping them around. So that um, it's just a different way of working your project and um, and that way you you get rid of the stripes and add more um, of the same color, and it sort of runs in to the next color really lovely. So to make the head more bulky, obviously you just um, have to add more patches onto it. I'll show you in a minute a little technique of how to um, patch make make something more bulky so you're not just uh, putting wool um, constantly on top on top on top um, I've got to felt this down a bit first so I can um, show you but his head's coming along really nicely loving this one it's a really nice shape so say you want to have the head um, more bulky then instead of just wrapping um, um, a patch over the top you actually take some wool and you lay it, um, lay patches of wool on top of each other like that. And, um, and so you've got a little wad here like that. And then you lay that wherever you want it to bulk it up. That's where you lay it. Don't actually, oh, let's put it on his tummy. There, you lay it on top he of here. And then you can either, if, if you need to, lay another whole patch over the whole lot. So you're, you're making like a wadding for him. Just felt that on at the back first. So you, um, you're adding a few layers all at the same time, but you're concentrating it in one particular spot by adding a little bit more um, bulk to a, a particular area. It looks a bit pregnant now, but we're just felting this down. There. Um, yes, and the, the, um, the needle is a blue one. Um, somebody just asked what color is the needle it is the blue one here um, yeah that's it it's the blue one so all of our needles we color them in it's our own makers code if you um, have other needles but you haven't bought them from us they may um, it's this they may have other colors so don't compare them to what we call them but all of our needles are colored in, in a particular way way and you can um, look on our website what um, we use for the coding of the color of the colors so um, even if you haven't got the original packaging anymore, where it tells you that too, you can still find out what needles um, um, you've got by just looking on our website and looking at the back of the needle. Right, there we go. That's it. So he's had a bit of bulk added to his tummy now. 
and um, yeah he's looking really nice I'm just gonna go into the big screen so you can see a little bit um, more of him in 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 the hole um, so there he is now he's got his um, brown feet still I want to cover them up a little bit more with a dragon uh, wool and then um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on on his face and um, for his face um, he needs a little bit more coloring in of his um, snout which still the white still shining through and um, he just needs a little bit stabbing down all over there's some fluffy bits there still and I'm going to so you can see a needle guide image here okay thank you Emma for that Emma very helpfully puts it in the comments um, should you be watching this video at a much later date, the comments um, usually disappear after a while, so you won't necessarily know um, where to look. But um, you can, um, I'm just telling you now, if you need a needle guide, um, just go onto our website and there's a whole list of the different needles that we do. I think we do 11 at the moment, different types of needles. So they vary from different gauge, different size, including reverse needles, twisted Um um, star needles, um, they're extra fine needles. A lot of them are bought from um, a German supplier called, called Grotz Beckert. They are they're the best needle um, needle manufacturers. They are, they're the seem to be the sturdiest. But we do have needles from other suppliers as well, and they are by no means rubbish. That they it just you can always tell the really good needles, but you also pay a little bit more. So. Um, depends what you want to use for and what use it for if you're just running a workshop and you want to get uh, loads of needles in for your participants you might not want to buy the most expensive ones so there, there is always usually a needle for everybody right so his face is, is quite um, it's quite lovely there now and now I'm going to show you how to add detail um, to his face so um, there he is that's what he looks like now um, like I say, uh, uh, ideally I want his um, paw paws to be a bit more um, jointed with the rest of the colours, but I can do that in a minute. And um, if you look at his tail, he's got a really thick tail and, and very sturdy legs. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to keep him like this, um, otherwise I'll be sitting here um, tomorrow morning still stabbing away and you will have all fallen asleep. So let's not do that. There we go make that tail a bit more pointy again I've gone a bit further than the wire on his tail to extend it the wire actually finishes here and I've gone an, at least another inch further so that's a great thing that you can do if um, if you want to make um, something a little bit longer and um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him ears and I'm actually going to pick a color out of this lot and it's green and I'm going to zoom in mm, still got that fluff up my nose um, so you can um, see what I'm doing here now. So I've got, I've got a bit of green, and I'm just um, tearing that in half. I'm gonna give them quite small ears, and I literally just felt this flat on the mat. So I'm tucking the fibers in, and leaving one end fluffy. When you felt anything flat, just be really mindful to pick it off the mat, turn it round, and then stub it from the other side. This way you can make ears so quickly without um, having to worry too much about it. It's always good to make two ears simultaneously because then um, you can sort of see what the other ear looks like and get an, uh, make sure that they're the same size. And they're just little, just little discs really, sort of the size of a five pence piece. In fact, I haven't actually held a five pence piece for ages. Has anybody been paying cash recently? I've, I've not had any cash at all. I've only ever paid uh, with a card and all the only places I ever go to buy anything are, um, are obviously food places, supermarkets. Um, so I only ever pay by card. I haven't had any cash. The only coin that I handle is my, my pound coin to put in the trolley. Um, right, so the ears are going sort of at the back of the head here. I've, sp I've spread um, the wool out so it um, fits nicely onto the head and then I'm just felting this on. You can shape the ear once it's um, on. So if you want to um, bring it forward a little bit, pinch it at the bottom and then felt it in on the sides to make them sort of more ear shape, like a shell. There. So that's one ear in place. There we go. And then I'm gonna fasten the other one onto the other side, obviously, making sure that they're 
pretty symmetrical. Um, just have to look at it from the front, which you can't see at the moment, but there. Hopefully you can see that now. Pinch the base in. Mind your fingers when you do this. And stab it right into the... There we go. You always find that if you're touching anything, you're always sort of adjusting um, bits around it. And if you want to make um, a dragon that looks sort of mature and um, a bit older, um, it's really great to give him big nostrils and, and sort of eyebrows. Um, and I can show you how to do that too. And I've even needle felted a little mouth there. The mouth is quite easy because you just go in a straight line underneath um, the nose part. Just keep going in a, I say a straight line, but it's actually a circular line. But just to keep it very, um, you see, you're just giving it a, a hint of a of a mouth, mouth there. Oop, where's he gone? Oh, there. There you are. So I've just added the mouth in there, and um, and then to um, do the um, the eyes, I've actually got eyes here. So either you've got little glue in eyes. Um, these are, I think, they might be four or three millimeter. I can't remember. So put the eyes in first, and they're sort of about here. I used the needle to make um, a hole. Insert the eye, and I know the other one's fallen on the floor because I heard it fall down. Gosh, there's all kinds of things on the floor. I need to tidy this up. I'm so glad you can only see a little bit of what I'm doing here. I am just diving for some needles, uh, for some eyes, but I've got it here. And then obviously you put the eye in on the other side. Um, make sure that they are um, in the right place so that they communicate with each other. There. And then put the eye in. And then have a look at his little face. There we go. You don't have to give them eyebrows or um, like hooded eyes. They look quite cute, just like this. But in any case, when you um, put the eye in, um, we have these, we love our little glue sticks. I've talked about these before. They're literally um, PVA glue. There's nothing special about the glue whatsoever. But what is really nice is that they come in small um, portions. So um, you, you have less, we only ever use it to glue in eyes or legs or something like that. So um, you have a, a nice little nozzle there that you can just put behind the eye, give it a little squirt. Um, even if too much glue comes out, I wouldn't worry about it because it will just dry completely transparent. And then do this on the other side. Um, and then that's all it takes. Tiny, tiny bit of glue. Um, put the lid on. It does actually um, fit really well on there so that um, the, the top doesn't dry out. And um, now if you want to um, give him nostrils or um, little hooded eyes then you use um, very very few um, very few wisps of wool make them sort of a bit shorter and um, and roll them into a shape that's like a little sausage shape you just fold this in your fingers first into the almost into the finished shape that you want it to be so I've got like a little I don't know like a little uh, parcel there tiny tiny thing and um, I'm going to felt this behind the eye um, into place so the actual shape isn't felted but as I'm felting it onto him it's um, and I'm, I'm starting sort of stabbing into the back of it so that it it, it fits um, in over just over the eye and in, um, and over slightly over the top so the actual shape isn't still isn't felted um, but that's okay because as soon as you felt it on it um, it sort of shrinks in size and that's how you can manipulate and then you can just let it so sort of slightly um, reach over the eye as well so he looks like that now so the eye from just looking there's a bit of glue still showing but from just looking like that but I think they look quite quite cute just with the eyes like that as well or if you prefer them having them um, look a bit more um, fearsome or maybe droopy or older whatever whatever you like you just do whatever you like so I'm going to do the other side now shape this between my fingers almost sort of how the finished shape will be put it on to the over the back of the eye to start with felt it down so keeping the 3d shape of that hooded eyelid and felt it down and then let it sort of slightly slip over the front 
Um, so there he's got um, two of them now. And um, again, if you work on one part, you might want to work on another part again. But um, if you want to give him nostrils, it's done in exactly the same way, but um, towards the front of the face. So I'm got, not going to bother with that um, on, on him now, because I do want to show you how to give him wings and um, the spikes on the back. But first of all, I will just dress his uh, feet up a little bit more. Um, otherwise, he does look like he's wearing slippers. So I'm um, wrapping more wool around his leg. Make that a bit more part of his leg. Um, the um, that grey brown wool there and a lot is also in the bending of how you bend the legs still so I haven't fin finalized that yet but I'm just giving him more of a um, there's a transition there between the foot and the leg and um, and then bend it in so you can see the difference now this one I've finished with this one still needs a little bit of work so again, I'm just wrapping the wool around it to make that a little bit shorter, that slipper, and then felt it down. And then a lot is in the bend, how you bend the leg um, for it. In fact, often when people are doing these wire armatures, they say, oh, I don't like mine or something's not right about it. It's it's nothing, they've done nothing wrong with the needle felting, they just haven't put it in the right position so um, that is often the case and as soon as you just tweak them a tiny bit suddenly it's comp it's a completely different creation so um, if ever that happens to you don't despair it's often just to do with um, with the positioning and the bend how you bent it it's got a bit of a bare patch there so I'm gonna just cover that up with a bit of dragon wool there and um, and then I'm going to um, show you how to do his spine with the, um, I don't know what they're called. What is it called? Like a scaly spine. There we go. Oh, he's all like, hello. Nice. You can bend his face down a bit more if you want to, because you've got, the great thing is you've got the pipe cleaner in there. So you, you can do whatever you like. You could also just give him nostrils by... Um, felting into one spot that's fine too there so if you want to give him a, a spine like um like this one then um just have a um a strip of felt whatever color you um you fancy i've actually got a strip here it's not quite long enough so i'm just going to go use the pink um and you cut that um into um Sort of a thin about 10 centimeter long strip this is our wool viscous felt which we use pretty much for everything whether we're needle felting flowers or whether we're doing um, um, pictures we just love this for everything so i'm just going to measure it because he's quite tall he's actually a lot bigger than um, the others but i'm measuring it exactly to the tip of the tail approximately here and now it's a bit boring because you've got to cut um, little um, triangles out all the way. There's probably a quicker way of doing this. So you want to um, cut them out relatively neat. You don't want to cut um, the whole thing, but you do want to cut quite low down. Um, so don't um, leave too much of a, of a um, yeah of an uncut strip. And um, so I'm cutting them now um, close to the edge, but not too close that you don't accidentally um, cut. I wonder if you could fold the whole thing up and just cut it once. I'm always looking for shortcuts on my tribe at the very end. If you were to fold this in like that, I wonder if that would speed things up. Probably going to mess this up now. But if you don't find out, if you don't try it, you don't find out so that would be like that just cut one lot out yeah one <laughs> oh please let this go right and then the other one yay i've done it oh there's a very dodgy thin bit there but um yes yeah, so that actually that speeds things up um in case you need to speed yours up but you might also just be really patient doing it which i'm not 
And then um, you start by basically stabbing into the wool felt and into the body of the dragon. Now you can use a little bit of wool to help you with this, but you don't have to do that. Um, so just stab into, hang on, that's the wrong needle, there we go. Stab into the um, scales. Are they scales? Yeah, I suppose they are. And um, into, try to keep it at, at central to the back. And um, that's how you fasten it on. And then obviously you can do it from the other side as well. Um, but that should be enough to fasten this onto the back of the dragon. Definitely helps if you have a little bit of wool to guide you there. There. There we go. How is everybody doing? He he kind of looks like a woman. Yeah, his face does, doesn't he? It he really does. Oh look, I've now also torn a bit of this off where it was quite a thin patch, but it doesn't matter because you can um um fasten it. It doesn't you know, nobody will um notice that it, it wasn't one straight piece. You can just join it together. There. Could probably make a moomin like that with um, very short arms and short squat legs. Um, yeah, just don't do them in that color, I suppose. Yeah. And um, that way you fasten the spine on and then you can repeat this on the other side. But uh, it's actually, it looks quite, looks quite good um, going on like that. Um, so if you want to stab into the other side, you can. You don't even need to use wool. You're just sort of evening out that it's standing up um, rather than leaning over to one side. Let's give it a few steps on that side. Make sure it's fastened on. And then um, finally, at the very end, if you want to give them wings, um, this is also maybe a good tip if you haven't got um, if you haven't got a, um, a template for wings, you can so easily make your own. Um, and I, I give you a tip for that as well. And that goes for any kind of um, things that uh, any kind of template that you want to do, because with wings, you want to have two um, that look the same. You don't want to have one side of the wing that's completely different to the other. Or, and you know when you when you cut something and then you um, shape the other bit again, and then shape the other bit again, and then you just end up cutting more and more. And then by the time you finish, it's actually shrunk in size so much that it's completely useless. So the way um, this is probably something that all of you know already, and I do apologize if it um, seems a little bit patronizing. But the way to do it is um, show you now. Hang on. Right. There's the dragon with his um, amazing um, spine. I'm going to bend the legs in. He's definitely quite skinny, but we can um, make him crouch down a little bit so he, he um, looks a bit more... There. He looks more like a lizard, actually, this one. Um, there. And I'm just going to go a little bit bigger um, because it's an easier uh, way. You can see him better that way. Um, that leg looks a little bit out of sync there. There. So remember to bend the legs. That's a really good way of doing that. And um, there he is. He's definitely, um, he looks quite, quite like a very um, kind and um, um, calm dragon. So if you want to make wings, the best way to do it is to have, uh, to make your own template. So that's where we got to. I just need to find my piece of paper. And this. Right, so the, the, um, you can do freehand, draw it from freehand, fold your paper in half, right, and um, just sort of, you can even practice it, uh, practice drawing wings on, 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 on another, um, another piece of paper, just so that you have an idea of what you want to do. So say you look up some wings, and I'm just trying to find the template for this one here. Say you look up some wings, and they, they're like this, but you haven't got, you can only see it on a computer screen or you haven't got um, that template to hand like that, then um, all you're going to do is you're going to draw half of the wing, which is uh, basically a curved line, then a few bits like in a holly leaf and then up again so that you come towards the center. And so um, you just do that on this side. So I'm, I've got my 
if I keep looking at it, I've got my curved bit that goes down, then I've got three bits like a holly leaf, and then I go up, not quite into it, but so leaving a good gap. And then you've got your wing shape here, and all you need to do now is cut this out. So you've got it, um, you're cutting the two sheets at the same time, which ensures that you are making two of exactly the same size. There. And now you've got a set of wings there. Um, if you're not happy with it, then just fold it together and do some adjustments if you have to. So don't start cutting individually into it. See if it kind of fits your dragon. I think that's a good size. If you want them bigger, then make them bigger by all means. Now you've got a template. You can now use your felt piece and follow the same principle. Fold it in half. Now, if you're confident enough, then just cut it out by holding on to it or maybe draw around it. But bearing in mind, if you draw around it, you will see um, the pencil marks. So I'm just holding it really tight and I'm just going to cut around it, um, just going for it. Sometimes we just have to go for these things. And again, and then the last curvy bit there brings me all the way back to the center. So now I've got my um, set of wings here. Perfect. It's like bat wings. And, um, and now I can um, decorate them first if you want to. So, um, which is what I did on this dragon here. He's got slightly decorated wings with um, maybe lines going in the, in the dragon color. Maybe you can pull out some of the um, wool. It will also stabilize um, the wings them, um, themselves because they're quite floppy otherwise. But if you add um, sort of features to it, it will make it stronger because it will thicken the whole fabric. Um, so Ross says mine still really skinny and nowhere near top coat I'm way too slow to felt along so one of the things um, that I what I find what I've always found is I've always been a really really fast crafter and um, even it doesn't matter what I've been doing I've always finished first um, which has been sometimes really annoying because I keep thinking I'm not doing it properly please don't worry if I'm way too fast if I did this as a proper sew along it would take so long um I mean what um projects like this we would or as a stab along we would we would normally I don't know we would run it as a workshop during the day to allow everybody to just go at their own pace which is exactly what you're entitled to do so remember Ross that you can um after I've finished you can just do your own thing and then when you when you're ready and it comes to the top coat just watch it again and just pause it um so this isn't lost the video will stay or the tutorial will stay on youtube and you can watch it again it is just um, a really good way to um to do something in an hour or so i think I've, i'm actually um, a lot over today as well because it is quite a challenging project so if you're still with me thank you for um for being there um but it is not you're not you're not um slow it's just that i am really fast um i don't mean to i i've always been a fast crafter and i've always been really impatient even as a child things always had to go really fast or i didn't bother i didn't bother doing it so um yeah i i it's just it's just what i do <laughs> so i do apologize for that if that is um please don't feel that you're not good or um yeah just slow it's not you who's slow it's me who's fast um so i've just colored in the wings here now because i just want to put the wings on it's actually i quite like this pink with um a little bit of orange on there and um to felt the wings on you literally just have to sort of go over the spine and put it into the position and then you've already guessed this you're just literally felting this on where you imagine the wings sit and just felt straight into it and that's all you need to do is you can add a little bit more of um, wool on the outside but i have actually felt it across this part that i'm felting on now but if you add a little bit more wool it will just ensure that it um 
felt right into the body and he's got his wings on now I'm just gonna go big again so you can see me again there you are so he's got his um look isn't that nice with the pink and the orange I love clashing colors so you've got you've got your dragon there you can pose him um, he can be more crouched uh, you can still fatten him up if you want to he's got his wings and um, he's got quite wonky legs then they ideally they need to be a little bit bigger but it's okay for um, for this short time making him and um, he's got friends already there and another big friend there and um, oh look they're all together and then they can fly away so um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will definitely um, get Emma to turn this instruction into a PDF so that if you wanted to, you could buy it from us um, and it's a downloadable um, copy. Um, are you all right there, Ross? Um, thank you. That was the plan. If you felt it at my pace, it would take it all day. Oh, bless you. No, you're doing really well. Just, just the fact that you're doing it. Come on, this is amazing. And... Um, Oh, you, yours looks like a green kangaroo. I like kangaroos. Why ever not? Um, I want to see all of these photos. Um, so you must pop onto our Everyone a Maker um, Facebook page and share with us what you're doing. Tell your friends about um, the, our YouTube channel. We're really trying to get more viewers and uh, more subscribers so that we can um, do more for you out there. Um, um, oh, yeah, he's a granddad dragon, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, nice. All, all a little family together. And I think they're really, they're really nice looking dragons. But you can make a fierce one as well, of course, if you want to. I quite like them when they're sort of looking a bit, a bit dopey and a bit sleepy. And I always imagine it's like Puff the Magic Dragon um, must have looked like that. So, um, oh, thank you so much for all your lovely comments. Um, Yes, please share all your makes today on Facebook or on F Facebook or on our website, on our Happy Place forum. Oh, thank you, Emma, for mentioning that. I don't know if any of you know that. So not everybody's on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, obviously, we are. But um, we thought that if people could share their makes, you could also pop onto our um, website. And now we have got a forum there. I've completely forgotten to mention that forever and ever. And you, um, it's like... Um, well, it's a forum. I don't know how else to explain it. So you you, um, you can comment, you can introduce yourself, you can share what you've made, you can add photos, um, all of that. Um, oh, Emma is already on the case of the instructions. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Multitasking in action, of course. Um, oh, great. Yes, keep adding bulk and then um, get to the details. The reason why I raised the head is because I wanted uh, to show you how to make the ears and put the, um, the eyes in and make that little detail on the face. If you want to do that, you don't have to do that. But um, the eye hood is exactly the, um, the same um, technique as putting the, um, the nostrils on if you, if you want to do that. And then um, just do the spiky um, back with a bit of felt. Um, you could cut it all at once like I did or not. And then um, the wings literally felt cut to, um, to shape their, their um, tailored wings you've made you will make them up and um, and then if you wanted to add more bulk you can and then just make a whole family so obviously if you make a smaller one you will um, the pipe cleaners that you're using are shorter um, but again if you if you get that um, instruction sheet it will tell you the exact measurements on there as well and um, that's all from me um, today I'm really pleased that you were all watching and I'm, we're back tomorrow together again. And I think it's roses. Was that what you um, think? Did we did we say it was roses? Um, if you could just confirm that as a last thing, Emma, that would be amazing. Um, oh, hi, Lynn. You, your grandson would love this. Well, there is a little um, project for you to make for your grandson. And um, I'm sure that um, he would love it. Absolutely. And if, if it's not as perfect as you want it to be, um, I wouldn't worry about it because children are so forgiving. Um, let's see your dragons and maybe you can have fun posing them in little scenes. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you, Emma. Around your home, what capers could they get up to? We'd love to see it, definitely. Um, 
now and faith mother goddess she says well now i have my next project thank you steffi oh brilliant i love it all i could be sitting here and chatting with you all day and i will tomorrow and we're on for roses and in case you hadn't noticed i've actually um hidden my camera um this time with uh, flowers and um one of them is a one of the little roses that we will be making um it's very similar to this but there are uh, quite a few different te techniques that I will be introducing to you of how to make a little rose. And um, sometimes you have to say it with roses. So maybe this is another little project that uh, you could do because you're thinking of a friend um, or maybe you just love roses for yourself. So um, I see you tomorrow. Thank you all. You've been absolutely brilliant. Um, and um, yeah, love you all. Lots of love and take care and stay safe and think positive. Bye.